The discourse around makerspaces is often one of great potential. Anyone can make anything. Included in this vision of making for all are older adults. Researchers are creating making technologies customized for older adults. And one study created a makerspace for older adults in a longer term care facility. In this project, we asked, how do older adults themselves make sense of these movements? How would they drive the making initiatives that involve them? Our study took place at Nestern, a continuing care community in the United States with almost 200 residents in independent living. The business center, which housed computers and a printer, transformed into the makerspace over the course of this project. Aura, a resident of Nestern, was an initiator and driver of this project. Aura formed a committee, the Makerspace Planning Committee, and invited, invited residents to serve on it. This included individuals with technical, as well as arts and crafts expertise. Tara, a staff member, played a central role in the committee. The committee met monthly and was involved in decision-making around all the key aspects of the makerspace, from what equipment to purchase to the name. We interacted with 17 residents and one staff member over the course of this study. Of the participants, seven were members of the makerspace committee. We were invited to observe early in the process. A room had been identified, the committee had been formed, but many of the major decisions, such as which machines to buy or what to call the makerspace, had not yet been made. Our involvement over approximately eight months included observing committee meetings, interviewing residents, and conducting one focus group. Our analysis presents ways that residents made sense of and formed opinions about the makerspace during its formation. The first thing from our analysis concerns the openness of the makerspace. Makerspace discourse is broad. Anyone can make anything. And committee members tried to maintain this openness as they interacted with residents to shape the direction of the makerspace so that it could be tailored around community interests. But there is a distinct sense of uncertainty among many residents that may have resulted from this intention to keep it broad. When asked what kinds of activities they would want to do in a makerspace, one resident said, I can't think of a thing. When we asked another about the kinds of classes that they might want to take, they said, that's why I'm not that keen on it, because I don't know enough to imagine something. Residents we spoke to envisioned benefits for themselves from the makerspace but were really interested in its potential in combating what they perceived as anti-technology sentiment they saw at Nestern, such as how residents rolled their eyes if someone pulled out a cell phone at dinner. But many believed that technology needed to be hidden or non-technical activities needed to be included to overcome this resistance. Aura said that they were featuring a manual button maker when they tried to raise interest in a makerspace because it doesn't require a computer. Because when residents saw the Cricut, a programmable cutting machine, what they said is, oh, you have to use the computer. Despite the enthusiasm and efforts of Aura, Tara, and the committee, skeptical reactions arose across Nestern, including on the committee itself. A major component of this reaction could be attributed to how residents lived in a space where they did not have control over much resource allocation, even as they saw their rents rising each year. The perception of technology is expensive contributed to this resistance as individuals evaluated the cost of the makerspace against other costs, such as a new roof or bus. Our work has practice-oriented implications for designing technologies for older adults. For example, researchers can recognize there are different entry points or on-ramps to a makerspace. In our study, these included button makers, sewing machines, and basic technology courses. Our analysis also gives some useful insights to help probe the concept of community. We found that when residents conceptualized the community, this included the imagined disinterested others, technophobic and uninterested older adults in their perception. At times, personally appealing ideas were seen as an inappropriate use of resources due to predicted interest from imagined others and vice versa. This is key to unravel when interpreting data. Some of these findings complicate a utopian vision of the makerspace movement, such as foregrounding the need to consider resource allocation in a community.